Luke uh, chapter 17. Gospel of Luke chapter 17. We will uh, look into the at the entire chapter if you have time or I will try to see uh, depends on you know, how far we can go along with that. Luke chapter 17. And we have been in Luke forever now, so we'll see that how fast we can go. And I hope that uh, you know we are learning something that can be applicable in our journey you know, with the Lord. So we see that uh, Gospel of Luke, chapter 15 onwards, that Jesus is addressing. You know, this is a longer part of the conversation or a speech or a, the teaching that Jesus is making over there. We come to chapter 15 that we talked about. Uh, Jesus is talking to the crowd. He talked about... Uh, uh, the kingdom of God, basically, and he talked about the parable of the lost uh, uh, coin, the lost sheep, the prodigal son, you know, then the shrewd manager, and those things are addressed towards the, uh, the larger crowd. The people don't have a relationship with him. And so he is giving that opportunity to the people, this is what the kingdom of God looks like, and this is what it is, it is up to you to accept it or reject it. So he was showing the different aspect of the kingdom of God to the crowd and the Pharisees, the people, those who are outside the kingdom. But many occasions that we see that, as we have seen last time also, then Jesus turned towards the disciples, you know, and talked to them. When he talked to the disciples, the tone is a little different. And there he is not giving an option for them whether to believe or accept it or not. Rather, he is challenging them, since you are part of the kingdom of God, this is what you should do. Now, that is the way we have seen in all these places. So, this is one of that text and context that we see here. And remember that when we talk about that, in his, the disciples means it is us, right? As the followers of Christ, the part of the kingdom of God, this is not just an option of our life. Rather, this is what the Lord, the Master, expect from each of us to do. And this is not an option we have to obey and apply. So in this part that we see in Luke chapter 17, or this portion of the scripture, that Jesus continued that conversation. Look at that verse 1, it says, Jesus said to his disciples. This is towards the followers of Christ, those who are part of, again, the family of God. And the, he brings there four different things in that comes there. So this is one of the difficult passage for us to teach or to apply and uh, how to, uh, to digest also in a certain extent as we look into that in detail. So the four things that Jesus talked about. Number one, he talked about forgiveness. Verses uh, 1 through 6, he talked about forgiveness. The second part, Jesus talked about uh, faithfulness. Uh, chapter seven, 17, verse, verses 7 through 10. He talked about faithfulness. Then we talk about gratitude, verses 11 through 19. There we see that the ten lepers were healed and only one came and thanked the Lord. And Jesus asked this question, where are the nine? A lesson about gratitude. And the last portion, the longest portion uh, that we see there, verses 20 through 37, he talked about uh, readiness. So those are the four things that Jesus talked in that uh, context to the disciples. Forgiveness, faithfulness, gratefulness and preparedness or readiness. Those are the four things. So look at that is what we try to look into one by one. It depends on the time that we have. Forgiveness, faithfulness, gratitude and readiness. Again, this is nothing new. There is nothing uh, as we think about deep to say. But rather this is something a reminder to that bring before our heart and life. But all these things there we can see one more component of this. Or we can say all these aspects of Christian journey or Christian life, the practices or disciplines of Christian life, is, is uh, coming out of, either the base of it, the foundation of it, that comes out of faith. That is what we see in between over there. So we see forgiveness, faithfulness, gratefulness, readiness. All these aspects of a Christian journey is uh, burst out of, birthing out of, coming out of faith. So why? Because faith is very important here. And faith is very important in our spiritual journey also. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, uh, the scripture that we all know that very well, it says that it, it, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Then it goes on and says that, because anyone who comes to him must believe that God exists. And we start with the understanding of who God is. 
And uh, then it goes on, that faith that continues understanding that the nature of God, the God that we believe in, is a rewarder those who sincerely seek him. So, not only believing that, first of all, believe that God exists, that all we do, and not only that, the nature of that God, what kind of a God that we believe, the God is a rewarder those who sincerely seek him. So, faith is very important. Faith is the foundation of all these things. So, as we go further, let us see that thing also, you know, the, the faith that we see. So, one theme or one of the things that Jesus teaches his disciples here, when we read this back and forth two times, we can see that they are asking for an increase of faith. They say they enlarge our faith. But Jesus, you know, uh, rebuke them in one way, you know, not just harshly, but one other way say that it is not only the enlargement of faith that we are looking, but the exercise of faith. You know, it is, it is not the enlargement of faith, but the exercise of faith. That is the theme we are trying to see and learn here. And most of us pray, this is a sincere prayer to pray also, as the disciples pray, Lord, increase our faith. But God says that it is not only just increasing faith, rather it is to exercise faith. Faith is like a muscle. That is what Jesus says. It is like a muscle. As long as you put that into work, that becomes strong. So faith only becomes strong in our life when it is challenged. Right? Faith is only becomes strong in our life when it is challenged. Without an opportunity, without a provocation, our faith becomes weak. So in that sense, it is good to have these challenges in life, right? It is good to have challenges because our faith becomes strong. We are able to exercise that faith into our life. Remember that when, whenever there is an acute need that comes, and there is an acute need or there is a great need, a bigger need, and the other side that we see is the, the supernatural generosity and supply of God here. And there is an enormous need here. And there is a supply of God's power, ability and character and all these things on the other side. But how these things connect, it is there is a conductor of faith com comes there. So that is the way miracles happen. That is the way things happen in the scripture that we see. God's enormous power supply in one side and there is our uh, you know, great need the other side. When these things come together like a switch you know, of faith, that is where it activated God work through that situation. This is what God says here that we are going to see. So faith, you know, dies down if it is a lack of stimulus. So when there is challenges and we are excited and we use and, uh, you know, exercise that faith into our life. So here we see that these four components of Christian life, again, forgiveness, faithfulness, and uh, gratefulness and readiness, that is coming out of faith. So we talk about faith more maybe other than those things over here. So let us continue uh, as we look into here. So Jesus says here, this is again a difficult passage for us to look into that. Jesus says, things that cause people to sin are bound to come. But what to that person through whom they come? It would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around his neck than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. So watch yourself and then that conversation continues there. So Jesus says that we are living in a sinful world. We have sinful nature. We do sin by ourselves is not right. It is, it is tragic. It is, can be punished. But this is nothing more than that. Let us leave that there. Let us go further than that. Jesus says that anybody, those who make other people stumble, or that, that root word, it says that, you know, anybody, those who become an obstacle for other people to trust in God, or try to, you know, deviate them from God, that is an offense against God that can be punished, that will be punished. So the question here is, or the understanding that we see over here is that, you know, when we become a community, knowingly or unknowingly, we all commit sin, right? Knowingly or unknowingly, we offend other people. Sometimes we don't mean it, but it can happen. So we have to be sensitive and always careful. That is one thing that we see over here. You know, one of the things that like we should not cause other people to sin. Or we should not become an obstacle in that sense for anybody to serve or, or, uh, or search God or serve God. How can we become an obstacle to other people? How can we become uh, you know, a hindrance for other people to serve God? 
there is a couple of ways that happen. One is that when we become an obstacle in God's work in his kingdom, when you and I know that God is asking something or to do for someone else and we postpone it. Whether it can be forgiveness or it is to rebuke also. Here in this context we understand that rebuke and forgiveness is act of love. To whom you rebuke actually? Whom you rebuke? Because somebody you love. Somebody you love because you want them to be right and to be corrected. You don't go around and tell all the people what they are supposed to do actually. You only correct the people in your life or those, those who concern that you have. So only person who can forgive is who love them, right? The only person who can rebuke is also those who love them. So we should not become a stumble block or an obstacle for anyone else to forgive. And when God asks us to correct a person, we don't postpone it, we should do that at that time. And the other way, when that person repents, what do you do? You forgive them also. You forgive them. And there we see actually, then Jesus says here, in a community again, remember that, I, no, I, we all will do this actually, in a family that happens. In a community as a larger family, extended family, that can happen, right? We all are, because we all carry our own baggages. You know, in the counseling business, they used to say we are un, un, unfinished business. There are so a lot of unfinished business in our life also. We can project that at, upon other people, knowingly or unknowingly. So that can happen. So in the community, it can always happen. But we should not be a stumbling block for an obstacle for anybody to serve God. That is an important thing. You know, you might have heard that story that Revis Sakriyas used to say when, when a man was stranded in an island. A man was stranded in an island and uh, after a long time he was rescued. Then they saw that there are three huts there. So the captain of the ship asked actually what happened. You know, what is those, those uh, huts? He said, one is the place I used to live, that's my home. What's the other one? That is the other one is the church I used to go. He's by himself in the, in the island anyway. And what is the other one? That is the church I used to go. You know, he's only by himself in the island again. So we all have, we don't like all the time. Those things happen. That offense can happen. But what you do with that, the offense, that is maybe a little more important for us to see over here. What did Jesus say? He says that you rebuke somebody's sin and that how do you do that? You rebuke them in private, right? You rebuke them, correct them in private. And what happened when they forgive you? Forgive them. How many times you have to forgive? That is an interesting question, right? Jesus says that seven times per day. So that means this man, every 24 hours you know, a day, every three hours he come and do something and he asks for forgiveness, what do you do? You keep on forgiving. Matthew chapter 18, they read actually in a different context in about the church discipline. Jesus was discussing about there. And Peter came very gently asked, because the rabbi taught the people, you know, according to the Old Testament law, if you forgive three times a person, you are a best person. You are a spiritual person. So that's all you have to do. The fourth time, make sure that he will learn the lesson. So if you forgive three times, you are such a compassionate, patient person. So Peter came to Jesus and asked this question. If he's okay to forgive seven times, like he just add one, you know, twice and add one bonus also to that, right? Six, not only six times, seven times. Jesus, Peter assumed that Jesus said, good job, man, you are getting the stuff. Jesus looked at his face and not only seven times, what happened? You keep on forgiving. You keep on forgiving, not only seven times, 70 times. You know, not only seven times, 70 times, it's not, it is not just a count the cost, a count the times, but what do you do? Not just 490 times, that means, rather you say you keep on forgiving. So this is, this is why it is hard to, to preach or to teach or to practice here. What happened? What do you do? Somebody said like that, the 40, 491st time, I will take care of it actually. So under that, I will try to, 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 uh, or, or to forgive. So it is not only just we are counting the, the time. Rather, Jesus tells the people, you should not be a stumbling block for anyone else. If you do that, what happened? It is better for you not to leave at all. That maybe we can understand that. The other side, he says that if somebody offends you, what do you do with that? You forgive. How many times you forgive? You keep on forgive. <laughs> and that become a forgiveness become a habit of our life. That is what it is difficult for any of us to do. So no wonder, you know, the disciples heard that. They say that we should have, a, you know, we should think that the first question they will ask, Lord, give us more love to forgive, right? But that's what they ask. They are asking, Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. But the soon they heard what Jesus says, they told him, Lord, it is very hard for us to do this. 
we are going to do this with us at all we cannot do with our ability remember that we are living in a sin selfish world each one of us are like that you know we all are like that we will never able to forgive the offense that was against us even we forgive we will never forget it all right that is for sure that to all of us that that will be there in our memories always that would be there but jesus challenges his disciples you should have a habit of forgiveness you keep on forgive then they tell him lord we cannot do this with our strength increase our faith we cannot do this with our strength so then jesus tell them that you know look at that this is the context sometimes that we misquote here what jesus says apostles said to jesus increase our faith increase our faith then verse 6 then jesus replied to them if you have faith as small as a mustard seed you can say to this mulberry tree be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you what what is that is, this is a lesson and a simple lesson we learn what jesus tells them there they are asking to increase our faith lord give us a bigger faith and many of us think that the when the miracles happen or things happen it is because those people have a bigger faith larger faith they have so much faith but jesus commended many people's faith in the in the gospels that we see and he was looking at the the centurion he said you have great faith look at the canaanite woman and he said you have great faith jesus observed their faith and commended their faith but in this context or this same thing that was used in different other places also in matthew chapter 17 that we read you know the people could in there cast out the demons from the people because of their little faith but jesus correcting the man says in matthew 17 verse 14 through 20 in that context he says i tell you the truth if you have faith as small as a mustard seed you can say to this mountain move from here to there and it will move nothing will be impossible for you look at all these places what jesus is trying to say then some people try to explain that you know mustard seed is round it is complete it is full all kinds i don't know any of those things the meaning of that actually the literal meaning we understand is very simple jesus tells them and i believe that tells us also it is not about the matter of your size of your faith rather how you exercise your faith again are you willing to exercise your faith and jesus asks this question to these people increase your faith that is your prayer that's a good prayer there's a genuine prayer and just look at yourself you have faith why don't you exercise this is a difficult task personally for me to forgive a person constantly like this and develop the habit of of forgiveness jesus tell them and so give, lord give us more faith the jesus says that you exercise the faith you already have we will see that little later also as we as we go so it, it doesn't matter you know how big or small is our faith it is about the nature of our faith it is the nature of our faith so what jesus said in uh, in mark 11 verse 22 in another context also he says that have faith in god can you say that together have faith yeah very silent very nice actually so let's say it louder one more time you know i know so let's say it one more time have faith in yeah have faith in your pastor how faith in faith how faith in prayer how faith in this and that no 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 the nature of faith the object of faith is only as good as uh, the, the, the strength of faith is only as good as the object of faith the strength of faith is only as good as the object of faith you know we we said this example many times faith and trust is interchangeably used in the old testament and the new testament in the word trust simply means you are leaning over so you putting all over our weight upon something that is what that word simply means in the in the old testament especially that that word trust and interchangeably trust and faith is used also not just belief you know it is just trust and faith so there we see that you know he leaning over you are sitting on that a chair this morning why you are doing that your weight is holding by that object right it doesn't mean how you feel about it actually as long as that bench is stronger the pew is stronger you are able to use that and exercise that that trust and you can sit it will not break right if it is a broken bench doesn't matter actually i have all the faith actually in the name of jesus i am going to sit there actually you will fall down it is as simple as it is so the strength of faith is depends upon the object of faith so how faith in god so there is a faith to movement you know faith things a lot of you know another brand of christianity that we can see out there but here we see what jesus says here 
is that you have the faith and what you do with that is important. It is not only just, it's not only again intellectual stimulation of it we are talking about here. So it is not the, when you feel with the difficulties and challenges, not looking for more faith to come to do something, rather act upon the faith that is already there. We will see that one more time as we go the next instant over here. So what seems difficult to us, easy with the God. So what we do here, it is not we are trusting in our abilities, trust in God himself. So the greatest difficulties may be overcome by faith. So the mustard seed conveys the idea of life and growth. It is a living object in that sense. So our faith should be active. And James writes in James chapter 2, there we read actually, you know, faith without action is dead. So we have to act upon the faith. So here we see that Jesus says one way, forgiveness is a test both our faith and our love. So we trust God that God will take care of the wounds and the pain. And because forgiveness is a painful thing. It is easy to say, I'm sorry. But it will pay the price and, you know, it to overcome those things. It takes time. It takes effort. It is a very difficult thing to any situations you know, that happens in any relationship that happens. So, but it is an act of faith. And we believe that God is the one who takes care of that. People misunderstood what can you do about it. You can explain, but people don't believe what you do with that. You can do anything about it. Only trust the Lord. God will restore those things one day. That's only we can do. So, forgiveness is an act of faith in that sense. So, our nature as community, what we do? We have developed a habit of forgiveness. I may offend to you more often. What do you do then? You know, you Forgive that, right? You may offend me or anyone else actually. What we do? I don't want to be a stumbling block. Rather, we develop a habit of forgiveness. It is an act of faith. Then we go further. Jesus says here, the second part of it, verses 7 through 10. You know, here we see, as a, suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after his sheep. Would he say to the servant, and when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to eat? Would he not rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. So here, the next lesson that Jesus talked about here, faithfulness. You know, faithfulness. This is not talking about uh, about uh, Indian manager that you have, maybe, right? You know, Paul was complaining about his manager today. You know, see the Indian managers. Some of you are Indian managers, actually. How you deal with your subordinates is also very important, right? Then none of those things are not talking here. But just straight, straightly get into that. What, what is he talking here? Talk about duty. Talk about duty, actually. The text we don't see about right or equality or fairness or any of those things at all. After you do everything you are supposed to do, and Jesus says, what do you say? We are unworthy servants. We just did what we This is an argument they had bring from the, the lesser to the higher. Now, this is a contrast one way that Jesus is bringing over here that we see. What did he says here? And unfortunately, we are living in a world, we are conditioned to entitlement. And we talk about more about uh, our right, about our duty. So Jesus' disciples, you know, act like servants, not as masters. And they said, give us more power. We have more, more uh, faith to exercise this power. And Jesus tells them, you should have humility to exercise the power God is giving to you. So we know that Jesus' leadership style is totally different than the world. It is very different. And he wants to serve, not to boss around the people. But none of those things are talking about here. Rather, Jesus talked about the attitude of a servant. The attitude, what is the, a servant thinks or ought to think. There are two things in that text that we see. One is this. The, the first lesson that Jesus says here is this. The master's needs are more important than the servant's needs. Or the master's need are more urgent than the servant's need. You get that? If the master's needs are more urgent, he is more than our need. Again, we live in a mindset or a culture or me first mindset. Everything is about what? About me. It is everything about me, about my feeling, my right, my freedom, my enjoyment. Now that is where we are. 
right? Everything have to do in my own way. And my life, you know, people, many of the people think that my life is like a movie. I am the hero. All other people are supporting artists actually. And their job is to put always the light on me. That is what everybody has to do. So you all job is to what? Is to serve me. I am the most important people. You know, I, sometimes I say this to my home actually, you know, because to, somebody to remind some people, you know, I am the most important person in this house because they forget that. I have to keep on tell that to remind Blasi and my children actually because I am the most important person. So I think that everybody has to serve me, right? So we all say this. This is a mindset that comes. If the things should be in my way. I, where they start, by the way? This is start from the Garden of Eden itself, right? They want to do things in their own way. And they de designed their own way. They disobeyed God because of that. This is a tragedy, unfortunately, that we are living in. People don't have a sense of duty even in the kingdom of God. And when we come to the church itself, what are they thinking? We have a Walmart mentality. What is, I am here to be? Sir, I came with a problem that should be solved now. You know, I have to hear nice thing. I want to enjoy the time. This 90 minutes I spend, I want to make it as, as pleasant as for me. When I walk this place, I should say that I had a good time. <laughs> and as somebody said like that, the job is not that. The job of the pastor is or the minister or, or you know, those who stand here is not that. It says that it is to afflict the comforted and comfort the afflicted. <laughs> That is the job actually. So if you are offended, any day you come here, I don't apologize for that at all. That is part of my job description. It's a nasty job maybe, but that we have to do. But look at actually this, this world that we are living in. We develop this mindset. But by, Jesus says that the job, the, the duty or the work of the master is more important than my need. The priority is not that the, the servant work hard. He was working to take care of the sheep or take care of the things in the field. And he came back. And what the master says then, oh, thank you for taking care of all these things actually. Go and take a rest and watch some movie and play some video game and come back and we can have a good time later. Is that master said? No. Go prepare the meal for me. That is part of his duty. And it is not again not equality or fairness, any of those things he's talking about. It's about the attitude of the servant. Once it is done, what we see, you know, there is not about selfishness that we talk about. Rather, what Jesus says, that, say the second lesson we see, the first lesson is that the master's needs are more important than the servant's need. Master's needs are more urgent than our need. In that sense, we can say evangelism or gospel, sharing with other people, that is more important. That is the first priority in one way that we see. All other things are secondary because we all will pass away one day. Before that happens, it is our responsibility to share the gospel with others. Then the second lesson what Jesus says here, our obedience is more important than our right. Our obedience is more important than our right. This, the servant has all the right to protest. What are you talking about? I was in the field all this time. I was working. All of a sudden, you want me to do this again? You have no concern about me? You could have asked all this question. But here we see, Jesus says, the obedience to the master is more important than our rights. Again, this is not, not talk about abusive leadership or any of those things. But the lesson is that, when you, in order to do this, what do you need? You need to have faith. Right? In order to do, we need to have faith. So here, simply, Jesus talk about how a servant Looking, it's not about our right again. Unfortunately, we are living again in a place we more talk about our right than our responsibility. When was the last time that we asked the question, what is my responsibility here, right? Rather, we want to talk about our right. This is the difficult place and world that we are living in. And our mindset is also developed in such a way. So we should have a radical understanding of the kingdom thinking. And we say that it's not about my right, rather his duty. It is not about my need, rather his business. That is what an attitude of a servant. Again, remember that. This is not to the crowd it is talking. It is to the people, those who are part of the kingdom of God. So this is harsh, maybe for us to conceive. But that is what Jesus is talking to the people, those who are in the kingdom. The lesson number three here, Jesus talk here, it goes further. You know, the... The, the, the third thing about gratitude. And before we go there, one more thing in ICC. And I will say, our uh, you know, privileges must be accompanied and balanced with our responsibilities. God has given us enormous privileges. And all the you know, young and old, everybody those who here, remember that our privileges should be balanced with our 
responsibility. The moment you talk about right, you also think about your responsibility also. Whether it is in the kingdom or the family or wherever it is. So these people, you know, didn't think about that. Jesus says that that is the way a servant ought to think. Our faith must result in faithfulness. Faith does not result in faithfulness, will not accomplish God's work at all. So then he talk about, you know, then the argument is this. Jesus says this. Look at these people. A master who is, has no regard and he is very ungrateful for the service of the servant. If he is acting like this, even the servants are not questioning that. How much for us? God has given us everything that we need in our life. Our God is not a God like this. Not like this master. He has more concerned about each of us. And he gave us everything that we needed. When God has given us everything we needed, and when we do, compared to God has done for us, what is our greatest sacrifice? What is our greatest sacrifice? Just, just imagine that in your mind. You know, the Bible says that God left every the glories of heaven and Christ came to this world. And look at the sacrifice that he has made for us. Compared to that, what is you? You are my, our sacrifice. Is there anything? There is no comparison whatsoever. If that's the case, God take care of all our things. You know, this master has no concern about the servant. How much we have to do our duty. We, when we do things, you know, I don't think that somebody has to come and thank me for that. It's my duty. It's my responsibility, right? It is each of us in that sense, the kingdom actually. Anybody, those who serve, we are not just thanking them. We have to go and tell them, we praise God that you are doing your duty. Because the call come from God. We have to glorify God actually, not the person. Of course, we, there is a ministry of encouragement. That's a different thing. But any time we are doing our duty, we have nothing to boast and we have no credit to take. We simply say that God has given us this and we want to praise him and do his business. And then he go further with that famous story that all of you know, gratitude. And there we see that uh, there is this uh, ten lepers that uh, met Jesus. And verse 14 it says that that's where we see about the lesson of faith again. Verse 14. When he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, this is an act of faith that we see. Look at that. When they turn around, they start to walk. They were not healed. Right? They were not healed. The first step they took actually, they are still smelly people. Still their, their, their skins are like that. They are not healed at all. They are second step they might have done. And the third step, it, the scripture says here, as they are go, they were being healed. There is an act of obedience. There is an act of faith that we see over here again. Because we know that the Bible says now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. This is an act of faith. And they didn't feel actually, right? It doesn't matter how we feel. It comes to the matter of faith. We sometimes look for the right feeling to act actually. Feeling can trick us many times. If we don't act upon our feelings, we act upon the fact. The fact that God is a rewarder of those who sincerely seek him. The fact that God exists. That's what we act actually. And here we see these disciples, uh, these uh, lepers, what they did. They didn't doubt the command of Jesus to go and show. And what they did. They obey, they be healed. This was act of faith. And you know, the obedience to Jesus' words reveals a certain degree of faith on the part of these ten lepers. They are willing to act again. It is not about how large our faith is. Rather, the question is, are you willing to act upon the faith that you have? Sometimes our faith moves the mountains when that faith moves us first. Are you willing to obey that? Look at here, go and show the priest. He was really saying, act as you are already healed. Act as you are already healed. They move to action and they, they were healed. There are two aspects that we see. There are times that we have to take actions. And there are other times we wait upon the Lord also. Saint Augustine said like this, pray as though everything depend upon God and work as though everything depend upon you. Pray as though everything depend upon God and uh, act as though everything is depend upon me. You know, if you are overweight and you pray, Lord, help me to lose my weight and refuse to eat right and exercise, what happened? You become bigger and bigger again, right? I don't want to use the other word, right? We get bigger and bigger. So what do you do then? There are both aspects there, right? We have to exercise and do the right thing also. So here we see the passive religion uses God as an excuse of doing nothing. These people start to move. 
So our faith is how to act. If you forget everything we say, this, this is what I learned when you're reading back and forth. In their context, Jesus says that actually. Disciples say, increase our faith. Jesus says, act upon your faith. Jesus, they say that, enlarge our faith. Jesus says, exercise your faith. Are you willing to exercise faith? This is what exactly happened. Many of the miracles in the Old Testament also. Now this week we are reading in Joshua, right? How many of you are in Joshua? Some of you are still in Genesis. Okay, praise the Lord for them. Paul, check on the people actually. You stand there and ask this question, hard question. Are you reading it or not? You know, people are taking very advantage of this actually because you smile. So, be harsh on people. You know, you push them. I don't raise your hands actually, but I hope you all are in Joshua. Or you stop by and start read again in Joshua, right? What we read in Joshua chapter 3. We see the people are coming. They are going to cross over the land. And in between there is the Jordan. There read actually... God commanded to these people, the priests who are carrying the ark on their shoulder, put their feet on the water. The scripture says that the water stood still. When? When? When they put their feet on the Jordan. There are times that we have to step in the Jordan. And our prayer is that, Lord, you stop the Jordan. In the name of Jesus, then I will walk actually. No, 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 no. There are times God can do that. But there are other times you walk by faith, carry the presence of God and walk by faith, that will stop there. You go further in chapter 6 also, we read the same thing. In the people, those who walked around Jericho, you know, you know the famous story. There is a song, it says that God fought the battle of Jericho. No, God didn't do anything there actually. What the people walked around the Jericho. And finally what happened? God did, of course, God brought down. I didn't mean that. You know, they walked, what they did? They walked around. They walked six days without saying a word. On the seventh day, they, what they did? They shouted. They shouted. Remember that there are times you don't just sit and pray, Lord, enlarge my territory, enlarge my faith, enlarge my faith, and fast and pray for that. No. I believe that the call for us this morning, not only just to pray to enlarge our faith, and the question is, are you willing to act upon the faith God has given to us? Faith itself is a gift, by the way, right? God has given us the faith. It is a gift again. And we exercise that gift. We exercise that faith. Any spiritual gift, how do you use it? We exercise it. So the prayer is not that these lepers, they turn around and start to walk. And they believe what Jesus said is true. And they act upon the word of Jesus. That is where the miracle happened. Again, as we said in the beginning, I repeat that. There is an enormous need one place. There is this a huge supply of God's power. When it is acted upon that, the connection is already made. The miracle that happened. So what happened then? That is not the point. Finally what happened? They exercised the faith. And uh, they were healed. They were ready. They were running then. The ten of the people, you know, they were as communicated from the community. They cannot go back to the temple. They are socially isolated. Religiously, you know, they are, they are expelled from all these places. Nobody wants to come close to them. They are unclean people. But the moment they got the healing, what they did? What they did? They ran towards the temple. But one man stopped. One man stopped. He got double dose of the miracle then. Blessing. That is what Jesus says. Remember that God asks us to respond to God's blessing in gratefulness. We have to be a people of gratefulness in our heart for everything the Lord has done for us. You know, it is a sin that when we become ungrateful. Again, as we said, the, the previous thing, people talk about their right. People talk about uh, you know, their privileges. People talk about their comfort. They talk about me first thing. They become obnoxious about, the, about themselves then. They become so selfish. selfish. They become very intolerable. It is so sad to see that. What happened then? Never been grateful at all. We said this so many different times in Romans chapter 1. The, their heart become futile. Their mind become darkened. Their, their attitude towards God become callous. And what happened? All those things. Verse 23 of chapter 1 of Romans says that because they become ungrateful. They become ungrateful. Unfortunately, we are living in a world around us. People are not, not for grateful for anything at all into their lives. They are not grateful for anything at all in their lives. So this one man who came back, Jesus asked this question. It was not a, you know, it looked like it is like a, you know, the tone of the question looked like so disappointed. Where are the 
നയൻ വെയർ ആർ ദ നയൻ ദ ഹ്യൂമൻ ടെൻഡൻസി ഈസ് ആൾവേസ് ലിസ്റ്റ് അവർ പ്രോബ്ലംസ് ലിസ്റ്റ് അവർ ലാക്സ് ആൻഡ് ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ആൻഡ് മേക്ക് ഇറ്റ് സോ ബിഗ് ആക്ച്വലി ഐ ഡോട്ട് ഹാവ് ദിസ് ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ബട്ട് വിൽ നെവർ ഏബിൾ ടു സ്റ്റാർട്ട് കൗണ്ടിങ് അവർ ബ്ലെസ്സിങ്സ് ആൻഡ് സേ താങ്ക് ദ ലോഡ് ഫോർ ഓൾ ദീസ് തിങ്സ് ഐ റൈറ്റ് റീസെൻ്റ്ലി സമ്മർ സേസ് ദാറ്റ് ദ ഡിഫിക്കൽട്ട് ജോബ് യു ഹാവ് ഈസ് എ ഡ്രീം ഓഫ് സോ മെനി ജോബ് ലെസ് പീപ്പിൾ ഈ ദ ഡിഫിക്കൽട്ട് ചിൽഡ്രൻ യു ഹാവ് ഈസ് എ ഡ്രീം ഓഫ് മെനി പീപ്പിൾ ദോസ് ഡു ഹാവ് ചിൽഡ്രൻ ദ ഹെൽത്ത് ദാറ്റ് യു ആർ കംപ്ലൈനിങ് നൗ ഈസ് എ ഡ്രീം ഓഫ് മെനി പീപ്പിൾ ഈവൻ കെ നോട്ട് ഗെറ്റ് അപ്പ് ഫ്രം ദയർ ബെഡ് റിമെമ്പർ ദാറ്റ് എവറി തിങ് ദാറ്റ് വി ഹാവ് ഈസ് എ ഗിഫ്റ്റ് ഫ്രം ഗാഡ് വി ഹാവ് ടു ബി ഗ്രേറ്റ്ഫുൾ ദിസ് ഈസ് ദി ആറ്റിറ്റ്യൂഡ് ഓഫ് എ ഡിസൈപ്പിൾ നോട്ട് ഓൺലി ദ ആർ ഫെയ്ത്ഫുൾ ദേ ഷുഡ് ബി ഗ്രേറ്റ്ഫുൾ ഓൾസോ സോ ദ ലെസൺ ദാറ്റ് ജീസസ് ടോക്ക് ഹിയർ ഈസ് ദാറ്റ് അവർ റെസ്പോൺസ് ടു ഗാഡ്സ് ബ്ലെസ്സിങ് ഈസ് വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ഗ്രാറ്റിറ്റ്യൂഡ് ഈസ് ദ ഈസ് ദ ഈസ് എബിലിറ്റി ടു ഹീൽ ആൻഡ് എനർജൈസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഹീ ഈസ് ലുക്കിംഗ് ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് പോൾ സേസ് ഇൻ കൊലോഷൻ ചാപ്റ്റർ ഫോർ വേസ് ടു ഡിവോട്ട് യുവേഴ്സ് സെൽഫ് ടു പ്രയർ ബീങ് വാച്ച്ഫുൾ ആൻഡ് താങ്ക്ഫുൾ ഡിവോട്ട് യുവേഴ്സ് സെൽഫ് ടു പ്രയർ ബീങ് വാച്ച്ഫുൾ ആൻഡ് താങ്ക്ഫുൾ എ പേഴ്സൺ ഹൂ ഈസ് നോട്ട് ഗ്രേറ്റ്ഫുൾ ഈസ് എ ജോയ്ലെസ് പേഴ്സൺ ഇന്ന് മെനി പീപ്പിൾ ആർ നോ വെരി മിസറബിൾ പീപ്പിൾ ഇൻ എ വൈറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ ആർ നെവർ ബീങ് ഗ്രേറ്റ്ഫുൾ അറ്റ് ഓൾ A person is grateful for even small things. It is easy to deal with that person. It is easy to relate with that people. And we want to be people like that. People those who are grateful. Unfortunately, gratitude is rarely expressed. And Paul says about one of the, the evidences of the, the end times. He says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 and 2, Paul writes, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be ungrateful. the mark of the last days are that the people will be ungrateful here jesus says in chapter uh, verses 19 jesus tell this leper and he says rise and go your faith has made you well your faith has made you well your faith is your belief that jesus has done everything right for me he does everything well for me and your faith has made you well and the second lesson that we see in that 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 context is that unless gratitude is a part of our nature we cannot be a whole person what is the second blessing that jesus has given to him rise and go your faith has made you well the other translation says that your faith has made you whole your faith has made you whole so the second blessing that he got he got much more than the other people if the nine people got healing but this grateful samaritan what he get he got wholeness also so ungrateful people are not whole then right so we cannot be whole when we are ungrateful so this man is coming back and thanking god for the healing he has received so we have to be a forgiving people we have to be a faithful people we have to be a grateful people but one more thing in that sense and we don't have the time to go the next thing here we see the praise and faith that go hand in hand you know be grateful and praising is two different things in certain extent for what we are we are grateful when we see that something happen but we praise the lord even when nothing happened you know that is the way we have to praise the lord you know we look at the things the things are still there we are willing to that's what we are talking about yesterday you know in in, in uh, efficient chapter 5 verse 20 a paul says that give thanks for all things to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ give giving thanks for all things to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 through 18 paul says this we we caught this so many times rejoice always pray without ceasing in everything give thanks so look at your problem is still sitting there the sickness is still sitting there what we do we start to praise the lord we start to pray we are not praying for a larger faith to come and take over but we start to exercise our faith and start to praising god we read in the old testament many of the places they thank the lord even before the battle they what they said the lord is good his love endures for ever the lord is good his love endures forever so praise is a natural growth of our trust great wellness is we do after we received but praise goes even before something happen in exodus chapter 15 that we read miriam we start to sing the first recorded song of redemption that we read in exodus chapter 15 they start to sing when 
when they have seen the Red Sea was divided, they were safely landed to the other place. But Jesus thanked the Lord even before he raised Lazarus. So even when there is challenges, even when the difficulties, we have to learn to praise the Lord in the midst of our trials. Paul and Silas were in the prison. What they did? They were praising the Lord at the middle of the night. When they chain in the, in the, in the, in the cell, what are they doing? They are not trying to do things and they are praising the Lord. You know, this is one of my best explanations I have heard and I have said this so many times. Many of you have heard this again and again. But I always enjoy, I, I look at that in that, that angle. Someone wrote like this, they said, when Paul and Silas was in prison, they were praising God after they are flogging and all kinds of difficulties they go through. They start to praise the Lord. The heaven start, the, the earth start to move, right? The earthquake happened at that night. Somebody wrote like this, the heaven was enjoying, God was tapping his feet when Paul and Silas were singing. You know, when you start to praise the Lord in the midst of your trial, that may be a sacrifice of praise maybe. It may not have been an easy thing to do that, but this is an act of faith, right? The problems are still there. The challenges are still there. The lack is still there. The difficulty is still there. Yet I will praise the Lord. Yet I will praise the Lord. Some may be our difficulties. When our praises goes up, the blessings come down as the song says that. So let us pray this morning. Let us pray that, you know, examine our heart. Are we causing somebody to stumble? Are you love enough to rebuke somebody? Love enough to forgive that person? Are you willing to be, love does not keep the records of wrong, the Bible says. So let us, let us become a people like that. We keep on forgiving to one another and show that compassion and love towards one another because we are forgiven by God. We have received greater mercy and so we have to do the same thing to other people. And we have to have exercise that faith and ask Lord, Lord enable me to exercise faith. We are not just uh, asking for enlargement of faith rather to exercise the faith. Let us become a people of faithfulness. God's business, the master's business is more important than my right and comfort. He, that is more urgent. Help us to be a grateful people. Would you please pray this morning? You know, many of us come with uh, greater needs actually. And uh, greater needs. Some of you will never share that with anyone else. Some of you share with other people. And uh, you know, many of us carry this burden on our shoulder. But we come here as the Praveen said, but God is here always and He speaks to our hearts. He comforts us. He challenges us. He, he encourages us. So at the same time, we need a cleansing from God. We ask God to, to forgive us. We have to become right with Him. So that is always we spend time uh, asked to respond to God's word. And we fail. We fail God. Sometimes we repeat that same thing. But we come before God and ask to forgive us. And he is just unfaithful to do so. So a few minutes we are going to pray. And uh, one thing that there is anything that in your heart you want to confess, take time to do so. Lord, help me to forgive one another. Lord, to have meaningful relationship. Not only just say I'm sorry, rather but meaningful relationship. To restore the relationship that was broken. And to keep on, leave an attitude. Not just to say that, look at me, that I forgive. No, it is God who has merciful to me. And I want to offer that mercy to other people. The Lord's prayer, there is only one conditional prayer that comes into that. Lord, forgive me as I have forgiven to my debtors. So let that be a serious business in the family of God, in the church of God. Here, we don't want to be just a superficial. Our relationship go meaningful and deeper. So sometimes we often people, that happens. Knowingly or unknowingly happen. And you know that that's an offense, you know. Forgive. Let's move forward with that. And, the, you know, pray that. I hope that you understand that what you are saying. But Jesus says here, if you are asking, waiting for the larger faith to come upon you and you can do stuff, no. Each of us, those who are here, I believe that we all have that mustard seed of faith, right? Are you willing to exercise that on behalf of your problem or someone else? Now, when we become intercessory prayer, this becomes very meaningful here. Because you exercise your faith on behalf of someone else. As a church, this is what very important to us. We do this always and that's why we invite people to come and pray. When you step up and you walk 
to this place it is not that somebody stand here has supernatural power to pray upon you things no it is an act of faith actually one way you are responding to god's word has the elders pray over you pray with you pray for you it is an act of faith you are responding to god's word actually and as a god will do miraculous things it is god's work it's not us it is god's miraculous work so pray that this morning lord help me lord help me lord to exercise my faith and jesus said in those contexts in matthew matthew 17 and mark 11 and all especially if you believe in your heart and ask the lord you believe that you already received it it is already granted to you and jesus said in matthew if you have faith in your heart and you command this mountain to move it will move from there here look god says jesus says that if you have faith like a mustard seed if you command this mulberry tree to plant get out and plant by itself in the sea it will happen so you exercise your faith let us let us stand by faith on the jordans of our life would you do that let us pray let us start, start praising god learn to praise i know that you all came from different backgrounds different denominational things and things you know so we are quiet people i have no problem for that but at the same time praise is a spiritual discipline also learn that exercise that you use it actually you know thank praising god you can be quietly pray to god but you can quietly praise god right so you have to be audible in your praises let us lift up our voices this evening this morning and let us praise the lord together in the midst of look at your problems and just praise the lord the psalm is oh come and magnify the lord oh come and magnify the lord not magnify the problem just magnify the lord let us learn to praise the lord in the midst of your sickness and sorrows and challenges and loneliness in the midst of difficulties and you know things are not going anywhere let us learn to praise the lord as 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 jesus said jesus standing before the tomb of lazarus he is thanking the father father i thank you because you always answer my prayer he says even before lazarus was came back to life let us thank the lord let us praise the lord let us shout to the lord with joy this morning declare that our god is a great god he is mighty to save lord we praise you jesus let us stand on our feet as we sing and praise the lord together this morning hallelujah lord we praise you jesus let us let's praise the lord together open your mouth and praise the lord you know in the midst of your challenges praise the lord in the midst of the battle declare that god is good his love endures forever hallelujah hallelujah in the midst of our challenges declare that god is good the problem is not good but god is good his love endures forever he is unchanging god lord we thank you this morning we praise you lord this morning we worship you lord this morning oh even though you are chained and bound in a place there is no other place for you to get out like paul and silas let us praise the lord together this morning i don't know what is your circumstances this morning if you feel that you are bound or if there is no where else to go in the midst of all those things we declare together without any shame lord you are good lord your love endures forever we praise you jesus we worship you god exercise your faith this morning exercise your faith this morning you are a child of god you are a believer you are a follower of christ you are the part of the family of god you exercise that faith not wait for someone else to come and do for you you exercise that faith you do it for you and for your family for your children for your situations you exercise that you can do it hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah your spirit strong 